Well, from an economic point of view, it was obviously a very tough period. We had many big shocks and shifts. We had uh, Brexit, we had COVID, we had high inflation, we had uh, we have the war uh, in Ukraine. So I think it was always you know, a very challenging backdrop yeah. for economic policies. But of course, you also had a lot of uh, changes. You had a lot of policy uncertainty, a lot of shifts uh, over that period, which of course markets don't like. Markets like stability, like predictability. And so I think that's one big takeaway from today that the political, the policy uncertainty now seems reduced. There's a clear mandate and we will now focus on a lot of the policies that uh, Labour has pledged uh, to pursue. I think from talking to people like yourself and many eminent people in the city and elsewhere, that actually, and in politics here in Westminster as well, that the, the quasi quartang Liz Truss budget, and I'll just reiterate for our viewers, Liz Truss has lost her seat in South West uh, Norfolk, quite extraordinary, I can come back to that later on as well. That budget was a damning moment for the Conservatives in many, many ways, of course, it cost them their job. But it also served as a warning to the incoming administration of Sir Keir Starmer and the number 11 Downing Street policies of Rachel Reeves. I think it did them an enormous favour to just warn them what will happen if you are not fully funded in your fiscal commitments. And that's what I think, but more importantly, what do you think? I think that's probably right. Um, and you have seen Labour already pledge that they want to stick to the fiscal rule of the outgoing government to get debt to GDP falling in the fifth year of the forecast, which of course does not leave them a lot of headroom in terms of fiscal changes. And so the pledges so far in the manifesto are a little bit more spending, a little bit more tax, but essentially no deficit finance expansion uh, of the state. Now, in practice, we think there are probably going to be somewhat more spending pressures than what has been acknowledged in the manifesto. We think about 14 billion to keep real spending per person uh, constant rather than have it shrinking and that probably also implies a little bit more tax than is implied uh, in the manifesto. But I think that's an important point that Labour is constrained by the fiscal outlook and they have pledged to stick to the fiscal rule and I think therefore the kind of changes on the fiscal front are going to be more incremental uh, rather than very large. Fascinating. We have so many questions and in our lovely warm dry studio two and a half miles from here is Karen Cho with a question for you. Yari, I feel very lucky today being in the studio versus both of you but Yari let me talk about what Keir Starmer has mentioned so far. He's saying if you work hard play by the rules this country should give you a chance to get on. The party promising to be pro-growth, pro-business, pro-workers can it actually do all that? So it's a great question um, because of these fiscal constraints. Now, as I said, you know, a bit more spending, a bit more taxes, we think on net that does imply a slight boost to demand over the next couple of years. And actually just this morning, we raised our economic forecast for the UK by a tenth for 2025 and a tenth for 2026. That's not a huge amount, but you know, incrementally, I think that will be helpful. Now, beyond that, there has been talk of planning reform, of uh, an investment program, of closer ties with the EU. And those are all things that have the potential, we think, to support growth over the medium term. We have to see more details, more policies. Um, a lot of these things will take time. But we do think, for example, planning reform could boost productivity over time. Some closer economic ties with the EU could also be helpful to mitigate some of the costs of Brexit. So I think there is potential there. Um, but of course, we need to see uh, more details behind those pledges.